Hi and welcome to my Facebook Marketing Made Easy course. My name is Ben Hunt. If you don't know anything about me, I've spent the last 20 years designing websites and I've spent the last kind of five or six years really immersed in exploring what makes websites work. So what can make more profit via via the web, via web marketing and as part of that, uh, I've, I've looked at pay-per-click, I've looked at SEO, I've looked at usability and conversion optimization. Recently, I've got really, really excited about Facebook marketing and particularly the social side of Facebook marketing because you can market using Facebook in lots of different ways. What this course is really focusing on is Facebook management for paying clients. So let's start by taking a look at what you're going to get from this course. Okay, so my goal here is to give you absolutely everything that you need in order to deliver Facebook social marketing for paying clients successfully and profitably. Now, there are going to be three videos. This is the first of three. In the first video, I'm going to give you the number one overall overarching most important hands down bottom line number one most critical factor for your success this is going to be the if you get this thing right then you can make money if you get this thing wrong it's going to be very very difficult for you to make money ethically and with integrity doing facebook marketing this first video is the absolute key to everything that you need in the second video, we're then going to apply what I teach you in, in this first session to five real-world Facebook case studies where we're going to look at five different businesses and how Facebook, Facebook social marketing may work for them or may not work for them. And then in the final video, I'm going to give you my step-by-step -step guide to delivering your Facebook social marketing for these clients in a successful way. So altogether, these give you absolutely everything that you need in order to engage some new clients and paying clients, identify the right ones, and then to run their Facebook page, their Facebook marketing for them in a way that makes them more successful, grows their business, and as a, uh, as a consequence of that, then justifies some good fees for you. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about what is possible with that in just a moment. So let's just start by saying there has never been a better time to get into Facebook marketing. Facebook is happening right now. Facebook is huge right now. Now, Facebook has gone public. Facebook went public a year or so ago. Now, look at Facebook's... Uh, the, the price of Facebook shares over that time, since they started in like June uh, 2012, so this is coming up two years, right? The, um, the share price went down, dropped about 50% over the first three months. Um, in August of last year, August 2013, they then broke even, they got back to their IPO price, and now they are like 80% ahead. So, Facebook shares have gone up massively in the last six to nine months. And the reason for that is that Facebook now ha has uh, a lot of shareholders who are demanding to see a return. And uh, what that has then meant is that Facebook has really got its act together with generating some revenues because they weren't too concerned about that before. Now, the shareholders want to see cash flow going through Facebook. So, Facebook have really, really vamped up their advertising program, and they've given you lots and lots of different ways that you can promote whatever content you want to promote. So, you've got the, the ads that you see down the right-hand side of Facebook. You can also pay for page likes to promote your page to get more likes. And they make it really easy as well for you to promote and boost any posts that you want to be seen by more people. That you want to be seen by people who don't already like and follow your page. So what this means for us is lots of different options for promoting our own stuff or promoting our client's stuff in this instance. 
But the bottom line is Facebook is now a serious marketing platform in a way that it really wasn't as such in the past. It's getting busier and busier. There, you know, the stats are absolutely incredible. How many people are on Facebook? Um, now, the important thing is for you at this mo moment in time, if you can establish yourself as a successful Facebook marketer, Facebook consultant, then the world really is your oyster because there's a lot that people don't know really about Facebook. Most people, and I include most people in the web sector in that, most people are clueless about how Facebook actually works, when it works, when it doesn't work, because there are times when you should not do Facebook, right? On the other hand, there are some businesses that can use Facebook exclusively. And we're going to talk about that a lot more over the rest of the course. So there is huge scope to multiply, and I really mean multiply, some businesses. So, you know, to turn double their turnover, triple their turnover. There are the businesses that can just, you know, crank the handle and keep growing using Facebook alone. But the key word in all of that is some. Not every business should be on Facebook. And we're going to talk a lot about that. So if you can find these perfect businesses where you can generate significant fast growth with ease, you can create massive value for those businesses. So we have taken um, businesses that have a six-figure monthly turnover and doubled the turnover of those businesses in just a few weeks, literally. You can, the, the, the sky is the limit when you find the right business, right? The other amazing thing about Facebook marketing is you can do it in relatively little time, okay? Just by running businesses' Facebook pages for them. So you can create enormous value. And when you create that value, that then can generate and justify good professional fees for you. And this is what I want for you to come out with uh, from this course. So over the space of the next, say, two or three hours, um, once you've gone through these videos, maybe once or twice, you will be ready to get out there to identify those correct clients, to approach them. You'll know what to do and you'll know how to do it. And um, let me just give you a bit of an example about, about what is possible because we, we have done this. So let me tell you a bit of the background. The, this is a picture of me and my partner, Sally. We've been together for over three years. Now, when I met Sally, she was working as a customer advisor for a large bank in the UK. So she was very successful. Um, basically, customer advisor means face-to-face -face sales. So she was doing customer support, customer service, and selling financial products to people who walk in off the street into the bank. And she'd worked in a number of branches, bigger ones, smaller ones. She was one of the best face-to-face -face sales people that the bank had, right? After 20 years, with all the changes in the financial uh, sector, she was really disenchanted with that and quit the bank. She tried a few little businesses from home, which were pretty successful. And about October last year, now I'm recording this in early March 2014. So we're talking about over a six month period so about October last year, Sally got into doing, applying what she had learned running her own home businesses using Facebook. She, she took those, what she'd learned, and she started applying that to other businesses. Now, the results have been absolutely astonishing over that time. Um, to the point where from just one client that Sally has right now, um, she's been making for the last few months £300 a week plus, which is, you know, about $500 per week or more from just one client and with only about six hours work doing this Facebook work for that one client. Now, if you think about that, if you got five clients like that, then that would be bringing in about $10,000 per month for for something that isn't quite full time, even full time work in just five hours a day, you could be bringing in a ten thousand dollar fee. And 
you know, we are not in a, in a position where we, we want to be looking for lots and lots more clients. Um, but there's nothing to stop you from having five, five of these clients or 10 of these clients or more. Because you can get more efficient at this. You can maybe then, you know, bring in a friend. We've talked about this several times you know, that we could we could just get a couple of couple of other people you know they 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 may have children don't want to do a full-time job but can come around and and sit around the table and drink tea with a laptop and do facebook marketing and it's fun and it's easy it's easy when you do it the right way so what i've been doing over the last 6 months is i've been seeing the results that sally's achieved for various clients and some of the results have been really good and some of the results have been a lot less impressive a lot less successful so i've been doing trying to analyze what works and why and we've had lots and lots of discussions so for the past two or three months now i have been putting together this course so that i can then help you to get what works and how to do it successfully time and time again so you know I'm, I'm not saying to you that there's there's millions available overnight but if you think about it when you um multiply the turnover of a client when you can multiply their profits in the way that we have and you know I, i'll remind you we have taken a six-figure turnover monthly turnover six figures and doubled it only using facebook right if you can do that then you can justify a proportion of those fees okay so yes the the, the sky is very much the limit so i'm going to share with you everything that we've learned about what works in facebook i'm also going to tell you what some of our failures have been what doesn't work on facebook as well and this is the this is the key to it all right the great thing about facebook um, and you know, if you're familiar with me and some of the work that I've done in the past, uh, uh, doing conversion rate optimization is kind of similar to this. Because what you're doing is you're taking an existing business, right? So they've got their existing products and services that they've developed. They've put all the time and effort and investment in required to develop that. They've got some sales channels. They've got their customer service, all of that set up. Now, just by, in the case of con uh, conversion optimization, you can increase the conversion rate, therefore increase the number of sales for, for relatively little cost for a business. I can do that for businesses fairly easily. Now, Facebook can do the same thing. So you can literally magnify the profitability of a business with relatively little effort when it's the right business, okay? And you can then do that, if you specialize in that, you can do that for business A, business B, business C, business D, multiply their profits, justifying a good share in those profits, right? And just keep doing it. And the, the image there is of the, the fire triangle. So in the way that fire needs oxygen and, and heat and fuel, you know, and when all those things are present, this, this thing can, can grow. You just keep, keep adding to it. Facebook, in some ways, is like fanning that fire. You can just really boost something by just, you know, uh, getting more people to see it, getting more people to take action, getting more people to engage. So it's all about magnification. And here's the really, really good news is it is actually very easy. This is what I've learned, okay? You can earn hundreds of dollars per week, maybe thousands, per week, per month, per client, in just a few hours, and honestly, with only the most basic computer skills. You don't need to know how to use graphics programs. You don't need to know any code. If you are familiar with using Facebook now, you've got all the IT skills that you need in order to be able to do what I'm about to show you. You can do it from almost anywhere. You can even do it on your phone. You know, we will get up in the morning, take our dogs for a walk. Sally will be doing some of her work from her phone on Facebook or from a tablet or wherever. It really is that easy. Now, here's the crux, and this is the key to the whole of this first video, is you, you, can, you can do this. You can generate this amount of profit, this amount of value, quite easily with relatively few skills right 
but as long as you find the right clients. When you do this for the wrong clients, it's going to be hard work. When you do it for the right clients, it's easy. And you can generate increases upon increases upon increases with the basic techniques that I'm going to show you in the course. So let's get going with part one of the course. How to find the ideal clients. So first, obviously, we have to know what does an ideal client look like. But before we get into that, let's look at some fundamentals of Facebook, because this is really, really important. So Facebook very much has its own distinctive mode of use, which is different to Google, it's different to Twitter, it's different to Pinterest, it's different to any other social medium. All right, but particularly, Facebook may be the most social of all. It's a very interactive medium. This is absolutely key. Facebook is full of ordinary people doing ordinary, everyday things, right? Everyone is on Facebook at all walks of life, right? Some of them are going to be like you. Most of them are not going to be like you. So what are people doing on Facebook? They are liking, they're sharing, they're joking, they're arguing and dreaming and bargain hunting and wishing and chatting and buying and selling and doing all these things that, that normal people do in a normal day. But it's all the social stuff that we do. Facebook is not a good environment for business to business networking, right? That's what LinkedIn's for. And um, Facebook is defined by people creating relation, relationships to other people. So you make friends with people and you follow stuff and you like stuff, right? So when we're on Facebook, we're being me. This is my non-work self. This is my identity. And this, as I've said, is extremely important. So if Facebook is, for, is the place where we share and explore and express our own identities, what kind of stuff works on there? Well, I'm sure you've seen cute stuff, right? Puppies and kids and cats and, and all these cute things, right? Aspirational. There's a lot of stuff about that you see about, you know, motivational quotes and spiritual quotes do very well on Facebook. Stuff that's to do with your lifestyle, to do with your home, to do with uh, entertainment, travel, cars, that kind of thing. Funny stuff can go really, really viral on Facebook. As I've, I've mentioned kids, people post a lot about their kids, people post a lot about recipes and food, music, bands, events, movies, films, crafts, again the home stuff coming in, bargains can do really well, very shareable, and tips and tricks and kind of life hacks tend to do really, really well. So that's, if you just kind of get a feel for all that social stuff that we tend to do when we're on Facebook. And what I want you to, to start to visualize is what kind of businesses can then thrive in a, a social, you know, personal, me-oriented environment like this, okay? Because it's absolutely critical that only some types of businesses work on Facebook. So. If you're not familiar with this, if, you, if you've been following my work for a while, you'll know what the 80-20 curve looks like. If you're not, this is the 80-20 curve. Now, if you imagine that the, the vertical axis on there represents the potential benefit of Facebook, and, and let's say that we've kind of lined up all the businesses out there, and we've lined them up with how well they could benefit from Facebook marketing, right, from Facebook social marketing. Because we're not actually going to go into depth about Facebook ads here. Facebook pay-per-click ads, kind of, you know, more related to, to Google AdWords. And that really isn't what, uh, what this course is about. This is about social media management for Facebook. Okay, so let's say you've taken all those businesses that are out there and you line them up with how much benefit they could get out of Facebook. Most of them will not get much benefit. 
Most of the potential benefit will be concentrated on the top 20%, the best 20%, okay? And some of them will do incredibly well. So where that gold ring is there, those are the businesses that you want to be talking to, really the, the top half of that, the ones that can, that are just a natural fit, that will do really well on Facebook. All that stuff down the bottom, we don't... We're not interested in that stuff. We need to ignore that stuff. Forget about those businesses. Most businesses will really, really struggle to get good results from Facebook social marketing. Most, I'll say this again. Most businesses will really struggle to get the most from Facebook social marketing. They will just not do well. It will take more effort than it's worth to manage the, the social media presence for these businesses. Okay, a few businesses can benefit greatly from being on Facebook. And there's kind of break even line there, right? We, we want to ignore everybody who's below the line where the effort involved doesn't even outweigh the potential benefits. So what businesses work on Facebook? And you'll see a little cheat sheet sticker in the corner here. Right? You don't have to make notes about all of this stuff because I'm also giving you a, a two-page cheat sheet that's got all of the key points from these slides on it. So you can print that out, you can stick it on your wall. Okay, So if you see the cheat sheet sticker, it means that this content is going to be included on your cheat sheet. So what businesses work on Facebook? So I've got now eight checkpoints that you need to be looking for. The first one is... Are they already profitable? If a client is already making a profit and you increase their business, their, their rate of business, their turnover through Facebook, they'll make more profit. Okay? And for you, if you get compensated based on some proportion of that value that you deliver, so if you make them an extra $1,000 a week and you charge them $200 or $300 per week, the client will be happy to pay that because they are seeing their business grow every week, right? And you're taking only a small portion of that as your fees. So what business owner wouldn't want that to carry on? So if you get compensated based on the value that you deliver, and this is important, not the hours that you spend. You don't want to be paid by the hour for anything, really. Right? If you get compensated based on the value that you deliver, that compensation could then be significant. But if a business is not already profitable, then magnifying that business will not increase profits. If a business is only breaking even and you make it do more business, it's just going to do more breaking even. So, you know, I think part of the, maybe the, the, the key to all of this is knowing what businesses to exclude, to ignore, to say no to, right? We only want to be approaching a small number of potential clients. There are thousands of potential clients even in your local area within a few minutes drive more than likely, right? You do not want to be approaching those clients. It's, it's uh, going to be a waste of your time because most of them can't benefit from being on Facebook. Okay, so we need ways to slice big chunks of this market away because we don't want to be talking to those people. And one way of doing it is by saying, are they profitable already? So our first criterion is profitability. We only want to be talking to businesses that are already profitable. So criterion number two. We want to be looking for a certain kind of pattern of spend. Now, ideally, we want businesses where there's a high frequency of interaction, where people can go down and they can spend <clears throat> excuse me, on a, at least a monthly basis, preferably on a weekly basis. Because the more opportunities there are for people to buy from this particular business, the more opportunities there are for them to interact with it on Facebook, okay? So it needs to be something where people spend a significant amount of their budget, right? You're not looking at things where people are going to be spending, 
you know, a single figure amount once every now and again, right? You want something where people are going to be spending a significant amount of their household budget every week. So the more that people spend each time they spend, the more turnovers th there's going to be. The more profit margin there is on transactions, so the more profit that the, the business makes on the stuff that they sell, obviously, the more profit there's going to be. And out of all of them, this one is probably the key. The more frequently customers buy, the more profit, but importantly, the more opportunity there is to engage with those customers on many levels. Now, we're going to be talking about this a lot more. This frequency of engagement is absolutely critical to Facebook's success. Facebook has changed the way that it works recently. It's had to, had to change the way that it works because Facebook is getting busier and busier. There are more people on there, more people with more connections, more likes and more friends. And the business world is waking up to Facebook. So there's lots of people who now want to buy ads to get your attention. There's more people that want you to like their page and are prepared to pay for that. There's more people that want to promote their posts and are prepared to pay for that. Now, how do you think this is gonna go? As, as a side point, say five or six years ago, Google AdWords was kind of like this because the market wasn't saturated. You know, people, businesses were waking up to the power of AdWords and it was actually possible because AdWords is based on a bidding structure in a similar way to Facebook is likely to work behind the scenes. You could um, do very well using Google AdWords because there were bargains to be had. You could get very profitable traffic fairly affordably. Now that is the same situation that we've got on Facebook right now. You know, people are starting to flock to Facebook. Now is the time to get onto Facebook because if it goes the same way as AdWords, then what we're likely to see is that the prices that you're going to have to pay to get people's attention, which is a finite resource, the price that you're going to have to pay to get your share of that attention is going to be driven by market forces. So over time, I would expect the price for ads or promoted posts and stuff like that to go up. So another really, really good reason to get into Facebook now. Now, frequency of engagement, we're going to talk about this. Okay, so we'll come back, we'll come back to that question. So let's consider a, a range of typical things that people spend their money on. Remember, Facebook is entirely populated by normal people doing normal stuff. Okay, so we're going to look at some normal things that people spend money on, right? Like cars and food and fuel and alcohol, you know, for people who like a drink. Um, getting their car washed. What about insurance and also gifts? So which of these things do we think are the most attractive sectors for Facebook social marketing? And it may not be obvious. So let's look at these in terms of spend and margin, profit margin and frequency, right? Cars, when you buy cars, people spend a lot of money on cars. They spend a lot of money on their house, a lot of money on their cars, okay? so. You spend a lot on cars. The profit margin on cars is actually relatively low. So it's like you know, between 10 and 20%. And how often do you buy a car? For the majority of people, it's very, very infrequent. Okay. So marketing cars on Facebook is not maybe a natural fit. The, the one exception to that might be um, to kind of tap into people's um, dreams, the daydreams about, oh, that's, these are the cars I really love. So if you had a, a, a company, say, that made like custom cars, custom paint jobs, custom bodywork, that made dream cars or imported dream cars, then people might follow that and they might follow it for years, but only a very, very small percentage of them are ever actually going to want to buy from that company it may be a good way to spread the brand, but it's unlikely to be a good way to grow the business very quickly. Okay, so cars, by, by this reckoning, when you're looking for a good balance of spend and marketing and freak, uh, spend and margin and frequency, cars aren't a great one. Food, how much do we spend on food? Well, let's say hundreds per week, whether you're talking dollars or pounds or euros, 
generally it's in the hundreds per week or certainly hundreds per month so a, a, a moderate spend on that the margin on food is can be pretty good um, and frequency you buy food a lot why because you need to eat every day and once you bought the food you eat it and you haven't got any more food you have to go and buy some more so food is actually strangely a really really good uh, candidate for Facebook marketing if it works well what about fuel so people will probably spend probably a bit less than than you do on food on petrol and diesel for cars but the margin on fuel is very low right you buy your fuel from the local petrol station or gas station there are pennies to be made per liter per gallon of fuel that you buy it's very competitive and it's a commodity right so you've got you know fuel from this petrol station or that petrol station and nobody really cares that much which one they go to because fuel is fuel it's a commodity right yes the frequency is is pretty high but the margin is too low there isn't much profit in buying and selling fuel okay what about alcohol right you buy less alcohol you spend less on alcohol than you do on food I hope right the margin is pretty good and also the frequency is pretty good but you know people don't spend a high proportion of their weekly household budget on booze uh, you know some people will go out to their local pub or their bar but uh, how much opportunity is there for bars and pubs or um, off licenses bottle shops to promote themselves on Facebook and to interact with people on Facebook it's it's not huge car washes you spend even less on that so it's a small spend decent margin fairly good frequency but again the spend is too low insurance we might spend more on insurance when we buy than we do on food the, you know an insurance policy for your car for your house life insurance whatever you know can be a lot more than you spend on filling a car up with fuel uh, the margin is middling but the frequency again is very low right gifts however is quite an interesting one as well i think with gifts you can you can spend quite a lot and you know, people are prepared to spend a good amount on gifts and the profit margin can be very very good if you just go into your local supermarket on february the 13th and just stand there for five minutes and watch guys come in from work you know oh no i haven't got the flowers the card or the gift for valentine's day people will pick up any old crap doesn't matter what the price is right it's worth it I, i'm going to spend 30 pounds on a tiny rubbish little teddy bear that says i love you um because that means that i've fulfilled my valentine's requirement right people spend a lot of money on gifts and a lot of that can be profit margin as well and interestingly gifts um, are not necessarily that infrequent yes you you buy food every week you probably buy fuel every week you may buy alcohol quite often right but if you think about it most of us know a hundred couple of hundred people right that means that most of us know somebody who's got a birthday coming up there's always events you know last day of school buy a gift for your teacher christmas easter mother's day father's day all these different um, anniversaries and celebrations that pepper the year okay so there's more opportunity to buy gifts i think than than we might at first think so that's my my rundown and out of these for me i think that, that food and gifts are two markets that work particularly well for Facebook because they have a good balance a reasonable spend reasonable profit margin and reasonable frequency so we're asking ourselves what businesses work on Facebook we've already said they need to be profitable already in order to be able to afford you there's one exception to that which might be a startup business that is well funded where they are actually prepared they they have some money available that they are prepared to invest in getting and growing a market but for most of us i think that's going to be a rarish case so you know we should be looking at businesses that are 
already profitable and where they have a decent uh, amount of spend, decent profit margin and good frequency. And the frequency out of all of those is probably the most important. Criterion number three on our checklist is do they stand out in the marketplace? And one good thing to think about is do they have an est? So are they the biggest or are they the cheapest or the fastest or the easiest or the nicest or the friendliest? Are they the somethingist business in that sector in the area where they work? And this is, I think, quite a nice little shortcut to to figure out whether they stand out because it's really hard to market a commodity business. You can't market a petrol station with any success on Facebook. Right? Anything that's a commodity, <clears throat> anything else where there's other options around with nothing really to distinguish one business from another, it's going to be really hard to market on Facebook. How are you going to build loyalty or steal customers from one to the next? This is a problem that many businesses have. Okay. Criterion number four, does this business already have fans? Really important question. And I'll explain. Because if a business doesn't already excite and delight its customers, how are you going to delight and excite people on Facebook? There are enough businesses out there to support a community of Facebook marketing consultants. Right? Enough businesses who already do a great job, who already have fans, who already excite and delight those regular customers. So we've got to be looking for those businesses. The, the ones where the customers don't really care, they're going to be really hard to, to, to promote and to build using social marketing on Facebook. So as I said, there's plenty of ordinary businesses out there. Ignore those businesses. They will suck your time and suck your energy. And probably you'll find yourself having to pump more money into it to try and get attention, to try and get engagement on Facebook. And all for relatively little return. So the key to this is find a prospect that people already love and already um, advocate and share and talk about to their friends and family. And chances are other people will love it too. And it's going to be a lot easier for you to build that love using Facebook social marketing. Number five, does it fit in with a Facebook mode? So remember, what is the Facebook mode? It's for people being social with their connections, with their friends and family. Okay, so here are the things that we talked about, cute and aspirational and food and music and all that kind of stuff. Does it already fit in with at least one of these types of things. If it doesn't, then it's probably not going to be a fit. Um, people, we, we, we tend to, face, Facebook is a very visual kind of medium. Photos and pictures work really well. You know, I mean, you've, you've got, you know, Pinterest and stuff like that as well, but, you know, it's, Facebook is visual. So photos and videos are particularly successful on there. So always bear that in mind. Number six, is there a large and coherent market for this business? So general interest products and services are actually better in many ways than occasional or niche ones. So what you want to be thinking about is, is the stuff that they sell applicable to a significant proportion of the people out there? Because, here's the reason, when you, when you post on behalf of this client on Facebook, you want those posts to appeal to as many people as possible, right? So if I'm a fan of this business that you promote, and I see a post that you make, and I click like, or I comment it, or I share it, then my friends then have a chance of seeing that I've done that. They have a chance then of seeing that post. Now, how many, this is the key question, how many of my friends are likely to be interested in that thing? If, I, if I'm interested in, interested in collecting model railways, right, um, none of my friends probably are also interested in model railways. 
So that's going to be really hard. That is not a large coherent market. There may be millions of people around the world who are interested in model railways. And if they're all friends with each other on Facebook, then that's great. But Facebook is, is a place where we're connected to a lot of our friends and a lot of our family and acquaintances, right? So it's not going to be a good way to, to promote a very niche product or a very niche service. You want your post to appeal to as many people as possible. And this is critical to maintain visibility. So thinking in terms of this, a, a, a general need, if you are fulfilling a general popular common need, that then means general and frequent relevance. So you want to be popping up things to people where they're going to be interested to hear about the new stuff um, day after day after day, week after week, and so are their friends. Because this is the key to it all. If I like something and I post it, right, or I share it, or I comment on it, and my friends are interested in that, and for every post, every individual person who engages with a post, if that then generates at least one other person to engage with it, then you've got what we call viral. Then that content goes viral. If by my sharing it, at least one other person shares it, and then when they share it, at least one other person shares it, and so on, then where does it stop? You can have hundreds or thousands of people engaging with that content. Number seven, are you in the target market for that business? It's much easier to promote a business that you already use, understand, and care about, right? It's very much harder when you, you don't get it, you're not actually part of the target market, and you don't speak their language. You need to speak the customer's language. And that could be in terms of understanding the local geography. It could be about understanding the local dialect, perhaps, if you're dealing with a business that has a local customer base, as it does in, in our case. Facebook marketing consulting means being a brand champion. It means that you are going to go out there and cheerlead for this business. And that is so much easier if you're a fan of that business already. If you aren't, you're going to find it a struggle to communicate with the existing customer base and to expand it to bring in new customers, right? If you don't already speak their language and you don't know already what they care about and, and why they get excited about it. So this is possibly the, the first place to start is by getting a sheet of paper and a pencil and writing down what businesses you know already that you're already a fan of. Really, really simple. And I have to say, by the way, that this Facebook stuff, I've, I've already said it, it, it is simple and it is easy. And I know that a lot of the things that I'm going to be telling you as part of this course are going to be very, very obvious. They're going to seem obvious. They're going to seem simple and easy. And that's absolutely right. Because marketing generally is about doing some simple things right. It isn't, very often it isn't about being clever or original or extremely creative. So that makes life a lot easier. And the eighth and final one is, do you like them? Do you like the business? Not just are you a fan of the products and the services and the way that they do it, but do you actually like the people? Because there's no point starting any kind of relationship with somebody that you don't admire or like, respect, approve of, or appreciate, okay? You, if you're going to be working long term with these clients, you want people that you get along with. Okay, so here's our, our checklist. Are they profitable already? Is there a high balance, you know, reasonably good spend, margin, and frequency? Do they stand out in the marketplace? Are they the somethingest? Does the business already have fans? Does it fit in with the Facebook mode, with a pay, with, with, with the way that people already use Facebook? Is there a re relatively large and co coherent market? Are you in the target market? And finally, do you like them? 
So that is our eight point checklist. Now you can use this then to identify the businesses that you should be approaching to say, let me do your Facebook marketing. And really the job here is to exclude the wrong businesses as quickly as we can. Okay, so let's look at what your job is gonna be as a Facebook consultant for these businesses, okay? You're gonna grow your clients' businesses. That is your job. You wanna bring more people through the door. You wanna keep that register ringing, okay? And there's just a few things that you need to do. Gotta reach new customers. You need to engage frequently with that customer base. And then you need to persuade those customers to spend more and spend more frequently i.e. you need to create the opportunity for them to spend and make it easy for them to spend. Okay, So you reach out to new customers, engage with the existing customers and the new ones, and then create opportunity for people to spend their money with this business. Because as we've said, the more growth in profits that the client sees, the greater value they see that you've de de delivered, and that justifies, completely justifies, your ongoing fees. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in the next video is taking that eight point checklist and I'm going to be talking you through five real world businesses and looking at how those businesses stack up on that eight point checklist, which will really, really be useful for you to help you to identify those businesses maybe in your area or that you might approach as a potential Facebook social marketing consultant.